Welcome to our new and exciting segment dubbed the username story. In this segment, we indulge you into the highs, the lows, and the achievements of making the username brand. My name is Sarah Wahogo, CEO at Username Investment Limited. At Username, we are one of the very few real estate companies where we embody proper corporate governance. We have a board of directors who are in charge of oversight as well as strategy. We also have a secretariat who are in charge of the office functions. These are managers who are professionals in their own capacity. In our episode today, I am delighted to be joined by our founding directors and they will be sharing their story and insights on how they made to where they are today. I am sure it has been an interesting journey, but what better way than to hear it from the horse's mouth? Habari zenyu waku? Zuri sana. Mkwazima? Kindly introduce yourselves. Uh, my name is Joseph Gitonga and a director uh, in Username Investments Limited. Uh, previously, I was the director in charge of sales and marketing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. My name is uh, Ruben Kimani. I'm the founding CEO and currently the board chairman, Username Investment Limited. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. My name is Julius Karaja. I'm a director at Username Investment Limited. Uh, previously, I was working as uh, the director in charge of finance and customer experience. This must be the first joint session you're having. Sure. sure You've sure. not jo done a joint interview before? Mm, I don't think so. So mm. this is uh, quite an amazing <laughs> The first of yeah. its kind. Okay. Joseph, how did you three meet? Uh, we got to know each other during our college days and uh, we became friends but i think uh, we never knew that uh, we would do something together and of course after we graduated each of us went into their own different jobs until the dream of username came came and uh, we found ourselves joining hands uh, to pursue the username vision. Um, um, I want to know, you were at Kenyatta University. Exactly. Julius and Ruben were at JK Watt. Yeah. So how did you meet? Julius and Ruben, I would understand, they were in campus, the same campus. Uh, actually, the, the time we met, it's around 2007 or thereabout. And uh, we had gone to visit uh, Jake Watt uh, to visit a few friends. And uh, actually, it's not among them here. Uh, so we had gone to visit other friends. And uh, we got to meet there for some form of a fellowship and therefore we since we were doing the same course the, there was a mutual interest to really connect uh, now that we were having an interest in IT and computers and of course as college students you uh, you would like to know how uh, they are doing and probably there would be you know job search connections and such and that's how we got to know each other and uh, later on because uh, Ruben also was in the same uh, evangelistic team uh, from Lycipia we would meet more often for, for those evangelistic team activities even outside college and we kept sharing more on uh, what we were doing from the perspective of the jobs you are doing and also what would be our interests. I think that's how where we connected more. Then Julius was also in Nairobi. But for me, you know, I went to Mombasa after graduating. And uh, so 
every time I would come, I think you would catch up more on what are you doing and what, you know, what, how is your job and what are you thinking about uh, the opportunities in the business sector. Uh, now, the job that I was doing definitely <coughs> took me to the property sector because I was dealing with mortgages and uh, project finance uh, in one of the local banks. And uh, I think that's where the interest came in. And I think I'll explain more on what happened after that. Thank you. So, Ruben, who came up with the name, username? Uh, I just want to confirm I'm not the one. <laughs> <laughs> but I can give a story about what happened. I think he has shared quite well how we met <coughs> and stuff like that. I'm trying to remember the actual details. And... Um, I, I may not have shared this before. What happened is that uh, we met, we knew we were interested in business, all of us, just without having to ask someone directly. And that's how the partnership came into place. And I think initially, because this business was registered in 2012 as a side hustle, um, meant to do IT contracts. What happens is that you are more inclined to be believable if you come as an organization other than individual. We did computers in the university. So once we register the business, we realized later that we were more inclined into real estate out of passion, especially myself, and realized there was a big opportunity in that sector. So go, taking you back, when we met to decide what the name would be, I think we had a series and uh, just like here we get amazing names for our projects, we came with a short list. Everyone bring five names, bring five names. We were the Julius that time. And then we analyzed all of them. There were amazing names there. And uh, Julius suggested username as one of his list. And then when we met finally, Remember we met in a certain uh, joint in town along Tom Boyer. I don't know whether that joint still exists. We used to take Uji there. Uh, when we met, it was very common. If you wanted to meet someone and have those many stories, you have Uji and you talk. So we, we analyzed. And interestingly, that's the name we chose. Though personally, I felt it, we, are, we were going too, too far because clearly that name was not communicating what you are doing, right? Username is unique. Your Gmail is unique. No one else can have your Gmail in the world. But initially, I was resistant to the name. Uh, but Julius, I think, from where he comes from, I credit him with a lot of creativity. And then, all of a sudden, he said, you wanted something. We have Apple, we have Google. They mean nothing if you look at what they do. We can take this, run with it. And clearly, after many years, it was the right decision. Just a follow-up question. That time when we were having that meeting, how old were you? Because I believe you are all age mates. Username is 10 years old in terms of operations. Uh, and most people work backwards. <clears throat> most people look at uh, which year you finished high school. Then they try to imagine before asking how old you are. But I think um, that was in the year, the business was registered in 2010. Operation started in 2013. We were, I think, 29 years old, like working backwards. Yes. I believe we're younger because 10 years, then the registration time. Oh, if you look at the registration, then that we That time have when you we were debating about the names. Yeah, yeah, we have to, work. I think that has to be in, uh, in the year 2010, I need to be very good in math, 26 years. 26 years, yes. pretty young. Yeah, I don't know whether you are Gen Z then. <laughs> <laughs> you were the current, that time it was millennials, I think there were no Gen Zs. Uh, yeah, I think we are millennials, I, I have to check the, the categorization. Yeah, I don't think there was chances that time. Um, now, I know very well that 
at some point after graduating, you got employed by big corporates in the country. Is it something that you'd want to share today for the viewer who is watching for the first time? Julius? Oh, sure. <coughs> uh, thank you for that. Maybe if I, before I answer that, I remember you asking me, Ruben, about the name username. When I graduated from campus, I, I was employed by Safaricom PLC, Safaricom Limited, and I was working at the call center. I was assisting customers uh, with the issues to do with the data, the gadgets they were using. So I remember um, one day there's a customer who called me and told me about a BlackBerry. I have an issue with my BlackBerry. My emails are not going through my BlackBerry. The picture I had in mind about a BlackBerry is a fruit. So I was wondering how, how are emails coming through a BlackBerry, a fruit. So that triggered my mind and I started asking myself, how would a company have a name BlackBerry? And it is so big and everyone has captured that name and they are okay with the kind of the name. Then came the Apple. People are using Apple gadgets. There's the iPhone, there's the Apple laptop. Apple is a fruit. Apple is not a, anything that you would relate directly with a, with, a, with a gadget or a tonic gadget. So that triggered my mind and when we met and discussed about the names that we had, um, that's how I decided of the name username. So someone would ask why username and you're in the IT business or in the property business. So for us, we were looking for something that is very unique, someone that will be able to capture people's mind. Just like uh, Ruben has said about a username that you might have in a certain domain, which is unique to you and not to anyone else. So back to your question. Um, after campus, we worked uh, with several corporates. Initially, I was um, uh, working with Ruben for a few days. I think um, at the place that we went to look for a job, we got employed and um, we were working with some software company. I worked for like two weeks, I think. Then I got uh, an opportunity with Safaricom. So at Safaricom, I went to the call center. I started uh, assisting customers there. And um, yes, I worked with, in several departments before I joined Usani. Thank you. Robin? All right, uh, uh, Pa, we schooled with Julius uh, since campus days. Um, became friends, lived in the same room. Uh, graduated with the same grade, uh, got the same job <laughs> by the same employer, the one he worked for two weeks. I remember we did that interview with Safaricom for customer experience. And I think there are so many people who have done it over time. He passed, I failed, I felt so bad. So I was left in that software company with another friends. Um, then I worked there for eight months. Then there was an opportunity in the Revenue Authority, carry. I shifted very fast because I was looking for a permanent position. But I went still on contract, worked for another eight, nine months. Then because of Safaricom was the, it is still the biggest, everyone wanted to be there. It's like a career, what, what would I say? Because it's the biggest organization, it was, it still is vibrant, it was extremely vibrant. So I used to apply, 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 and finally, after doing several interviews, I got one position. That was in the year 2010, right? I mean, of course, I joined Julius U, it was the customer experience. I went to the engineering department as a management trainee, and uh, then transition became a... Uh, those people who manage your airtime. The engineers who manage your airtimes, GE, Safaricom is all those kind of things you hear out there. That's what we used to do. It's called billing. So I worked there for five years from 2010. That was my third job. And of course, uh, username came calling. Username didn't needed our attention because uh, having worked on it on the side, we realize if you are to dedicate 100% of our mind, effort, and time, we'd actually serve Kenyans better because you are actually gaining traction and getting customers. And of course, you are very interested. That is more or less the career journey 
there are people who think you are never employed. We were. That experience was very important. And I think if you look at username today, there are some aspects that uh, might look similar with uh, many other organizations out there. Maybe in terms of behavior, the culture, some of these things you learn when you work in many other places and they are beneficial to our customers as well. Thank you, Ruben. Joseph, where were you before you transitioned to username? Uh, for my case, uh, first I actually took a year longer in, uh, in university because my engineering did, uh, course needed five years. So these guys, uh, one year ahead, they were already employed and making money. I admired them a lot. So when I graduated in December of 2009, I got a job with uh, the Kenya Commercial Bank. Uh, but actually it's not what I wanted, because my desire was to join the IT department with an interest in database administration. That time the you know banks were getting uh, you know their core banking systems and there were job opportunities there. But unfortunately the opportunity that was there uh, was in a mortgage and uh, you know project finance. And it took one of the uh, one of my friends who used to work in the bank, you know, to, to, you know, to advise me that uh, you don't need to decline this job opportunity. You can join the bank and uh, down the line th there will be internal job opportunities. We used to call them IG IJAs, internal job applications, and you can actually switch departments. And uh, so I listened and I thought, okay, let me give it a shot. Plus also I want to learn more about, uh, you know, uh, the property sector. You know, those who remember then, there was a property boom in Dubai. And uh, it's a very interesting period of time. Dubai was growing and, uh, you know, uh, the... the two biggest companies, the likes of Damak, were, you know, constructing huge projects and islands in the ocean. And therefore I thought, okay, this is, could be a chance to understand more about properties. And that, that's the time I joined the mortgage department. Of course, dealing with the uh, residential mortgage, uh, commercial real estate, you know, projects being financed by the banks, could be malls, could be rental properties and such. And I worked there for two years. Then I actually got a chance with uh, housing finance. Uh, and I joined there. That was the end, end of 2011, I think around December. So, and I worked there for like a year and a half before joining a username, uh, mid of 2013. That was after uh, the elections. Remember the election in 2013 was done in March. And so that was a nice time now to you know, join the business. Uh, because you know the Jubilee government then, the Huruto administration came with a lot of robust programs for youths, uh, women and uh, people with disabilities. And uh, the government was, had huge promises, 30% contracts, and we thought, this is our time. So, actually, now we, we actually had a lot of uh, uh, motivation to now see what opportunities can we take within government, because 30% contracts could translate to maybe three, 400 billion. And you just need a small piece of the cake to, to succeed. Uh, but uh, that was never to be. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. I want to know who is the most daring. So who quit first to come and join the business? Uh, I quit first. <coughs> I, I don't think it's... Uh, 
because I was the most daring, I wouldn't really want to approach it from that perspective. It was a discussion that we had. Uh, who would uh, be more flexible to quit first? And, uh, you know, I admire these two gentlemen. First, they, they, they took, uh, you know, huge loans, um, you know, with their pay slips to finance the business. And uh, so for me, I, I felt I did not want to tie myself with a loan. And I, since I had not taken a loan, then I, it was easier for me to leave. Because, you know, the moment you take a loan from a bank at 5%, the, and then you quit, the rate will translate to 15%. That time, that was it. And I could tell this would be a huge burden on me without a pay slip. And of course, we couldn't be able to pay much. Actually, the, the kind of a salary I was getting, username could not compensate me. So it was more of a sacrifice. And I quit fast. It was in June of 2013. Um, and then they followed later. And of course, they were servicing the loans using their pay slips, which was convenient because if they all quit, then it would have burdened the, the small business with the loan repayments. And uh, that would have been a huge burden. So it's a, it was a matter of strategy more than just being daring. Okay. Yes. But then what I'm hearing that you dared to quit, but you are also quite uh, risk averse because you were not willing to take a loan. Uh, I think uh, in terms of risk, my risk appetite is high. Uh, the only thing that I didn't want to do is, you know, to combine two burdens at the same time. One is that you have left your job already and uh, the new business that you are actually going to start, there's no certainty that it is going to succeed. So it would only be prudent also not to add, add yourself another loan burden on top of that. So the agreement was that uh, you guys, you are still uh, working at Safaricom PLC and using your pay slips, you can service the loans. But that loan is actually uh, helping to grow the business. And that way we try, we try to reduce the, 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 even the payroll burden because it, Ruben would really not expect compensation from a small business. So we were trying to manage risk from that perspective. But for me, uh, I felt like I also had gotten some experience dealing with customers and uh, uh, the mortgage business and all that. And I felt ready to just venture into the business that time. I think it's now very clear because then Ruben and Julius were employed, they could service alone. Yes. I, I totally get it now. Um, so Ruben, how long did it take you to quit employment and join Joseph? Lee has explained about some of the reasons we We used to have many meetings, very many meetings, and I think they really assisted for us to be on the same line of thought. We were young, daring, uh, and stuff like that. And uh, he left in 2014. I don't know where he had mentioned that. I left in 2015, then Julius left in 2016. It was, it was a discussion. You come, you sit down, you weigh. Uh, it's like a business decision, like, actually. Can I leave? Can I? And of course, there's also aspects to do with your family and the personal decision. You have to say maybe you should not leave. Because that's when you are really want to do business, most people are usually uh, very driven to make some decision, right? They're usually very, not driven, eager. So I left in 2015. Uh, like I said, I had worked for five years in uh, the PLC. And I still remember it was 2nd of July uh, in 2015. Like he mentioned, we took huge loans in 20. 
Was it 2012 or 2013 or there about, right? And you paying, I was paying quite a sum per month and uh, those considerations were important. When a business start from day one, your expenses are usually higher than the amount you are receiving. It's actually an, uh, an act of faith. You believe that your revenue will soon be higher than your expenditure. And with that God, it happened like after one year. So I left in 2015, worked for those five years. I also believe that was the right time. For me, I knew from a long time ago that eventually that the, the direction I would like to take as a person. So it was a matter of when. And of course, there's a lot of fear when you have stable income, a stable job, paying so much good money. There's that fear of living and of course, over time, psychologically, you keep reducing that fear until you are ready. And of course, you are taken a loan, I was paying the loan, and I had thought about how to restructure that particular facility. It was an unsecured loan then. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is uh, that employment preparation, I feel, from my own perspective, something that is very important because, like I said, it gives you a lot of corporate experience. And I feel like there are many people who don't have that chance to be able to see how, the same way we do things here, how businesses are run, how people interact, how decisions are made. And, some, and I think PLC was one of the best training grounds then, and I, it really has helped us. So that is more or less about the employment part. Until we jump ship, now we are on the other side of things. And those things we used to ask the employer to do, now it was our, our turn to be asked to do the same things. And it is not an easy thing to, to, to do. So who followed after Joseph? It is me. Oh. He left in 2014. Mm -hmm. 2015, 2016. Okay. 2013. 2013. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 2013, 2015, 2016. Oh, so three years later. Okay. So, Julius, what was going through your mind all this time? Joseph was already running the business, Ruben has joined. Ruben had mentioned there was fear, you know, fear of the unknown. What was going through your mind? Um, okay. Um, one of the things that I learned at PLC when I was working at the call center is about multitasking. Uh, it's, a two, it's a skill set that I learned and uh, that I started to apply. And I remember just before I left uh, Safaricom, I was working in the network operations department. We would work for like four days, and then we are given like three days off. So within those three days, I would um, have time to go and work at username as a young baby as it was then. So uh, basically I was like multitasking. Some part of the week, I'm working with the uh, PLC. Part of the week, I'm working with the uh, username. So, um, Within that period, between the, the, the time that Joseph left, joined uh, username, Ruben left, joined username, I had learned uh, quite a number of things. So by the time I was leaving, uh, I was very sure. Now I'm going to focus. I'm not going to multitask here and there. So I had prepared my, my, myself psychologically, mentally, and uh, in all aspects. I knew now this is the time and I was you know, very sure so that I can be able to support them and grow the business. So this was three years later. Did you have an employee, Joseph? Uh, yes, we had one employee uh, who we would leave in the office. You know, my day, my day schedule would be that maybe I'm taking customers to site. Uh, when there is a customer I'm going to meet out there, and you don't need to, you don't want to leave the office closed. So we had uh, one employee who acted as our front office person. Really, there was no JD. You could be given any work. He would uh, be the one cleaning the office, 
if he's not there, I'm the one cleaning the office, taking a check to the bank and all manner of things. So we had one employee for, for the first three years. I would say 2013, we actually, uh, would say 2013, 14 and 15, because our second employee came uh, in 2016, and that was Esther. So for the first three years, we were like the two of us, and then Ruben joined in 2015. And so when he joined, you see, the, sm the office was too small. There was a table, one would sit here, the other one here, and that is the door. So even when Ruben came, there was no space for him. And uh, he would not, you know, displace the, the, uh, this uh, employee from their comfortable position. So every time you are leaving, he, ha he had to actually stand and push the seat for you to even go out of the office. So there were those limitations. The office was quite small and uh, that's the rent we could be able to afford at that time. And therefore, most of the time you are the two of us. If he's on leave, then you are alone. If I happen to go on leave, uh, basically there was no leave. But in case there is an emergency that you must attend to, then he's all alone. Until Ju uh, now Ruben joined us and uh, the operations were much easier. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you all for responding to those questions. As we come to the end of the formative years of username, what do you think was the most interesting thing at username during the formative years? Um, that's an interesting question. I, I think during the formative years, the most interesting part is learning. When you come out of the corporate world, you actually don't understand, you know, the, the business 360 degrees uh, uh, in operation, the practical part of the business. And once you get into the business, then you realize that there are many challenges that you have to deal with. It's not just about the product. It's about uh, <coughs> understanding the customer, uh, what their needs are, what are the opportunities in the market. And um, matching that with what you are offering. At times, most entrepreneurs, when they get into business, you actually think that what you think people need is what they need. And in some cases, that's not uh, actually the fact. Uh, so you need to start learning about the consumer patterns and uh, what their need is, and try to match your product offering, your service, the packaging and all that to what the market needs. It's a challenging part, I would say. Uh, plus also other obvious things such as capital. Capital in real estate was uh, quite a challenge because the industry is capital intensive. Um, growing the brand, the marketing part of it, you know, learning about the, co the entire conveyancing process. I would say there are many things that uh, were quite of a challenge but also exciting at the same time uh, when you are able now to learn, adapt and be able uh, to capture the market. Yes. Thank you, Joseph Ruben. Um, I think there are many interesting things to start with and uh, very many challenging things on the other side. I think I'll highlight like two. I think number one, if you look at uh, entrepreneurship, for those who like pursuing it, it's like a game. Especially if you have that bug and you are very much interested into it. For me, the fact that now I was able to uh, come from the previous experience I had in employment, and now I'm here, I'm playing this game. The same way people wait for these big Premier League games. And it is very exciting. Imagine being someone now who is doing the same in the business field. This comes with trying things. 
uh, within a, an environment where you're not so much limited, like you may be limited in a certain corporate job where you're only doing marketing, you're only doing, uh, say, billing like I used to do, or you're doing accounts. This is not a limited field, you're only limited by yourself, right? So for me, that playing that game, uh, as much as sometimes you lose, is an exciting thing, it keeps you alive. Number two is that feeling like, of course, everyone has their own personal objectives and passions and interest in life. That thing of being able to follow what you believe is the right thing that you should be doing, as difficult as it gets, because I will tell you entrepreneurship is 10 times more difficult than employment. But the feeling like you are the determinant of your destiny, you are the one who is driving that car, you are the one who is 100% responsible for your future, for me that is very exciting. And of course you are offering service to customers as you do that. You have ideas that you'd like to implement. And most of these ideas, if you look at you, the way username have grown, some of them were daring especially in the initial phase, and they were meant to provide products to customers. Uh, especially we came and said, uh, we have billions of young people like me. They were employed like me. They were getting salaries like me then, and good salaries for that matter. We realized as Ruben, I could not afford even the properties that we could see on TV, on radio being advertised. Then we felt if Ruben, who has a good pay, cannot afford these properties. So about millions of these young people who are still looking for homes and investment opportunities. Now, the capability to implement such ideas for me is very exciting. And there are so many other ideas, as you see in username. They are meant to serve our customers, provide those investment opportunities, provide those homes you see. It's about solving many challenges. For me, that is exciting. But of course, it comes with setbacks. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose everything. Thank you, Robin. Behind the scenes, there was a mention of the very small office and the sofa set. Julius, please tell us more. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> that's a good one. I remember during our former TV years when we started, and this is one of the things that I really, really like to that. Uh, we started small, just like a friend of mine used to tell us, you always start small and you grow big. So in a very small office that we had in town, our very first office uh, along Moy Avenue, we didn't have furniture. And uh, remember, I just mentioned about capital. We needed to have capital for starting the business, for our operations, for the projects. We had to balance. I think at that time I was the one who was in charge of uh, the finances uh, since then. So um, it came a time whereby you had to balance. You need money to pay the office. You need money to do a project. You need money for operations. And you need money to buy the furniture. And um, I remember telling them now, because we don't have a lot of money, we have to look for a solution. And one of the solutions was, I know a place where they do very good furniture. It was somewhere along Jogo Road, Motido. It's called Mot Outering Road, Motido. So a friend of mine was doing some very good furniture and we had to tell him we need this kind of a chair and this kind of a small, um, a small table so that whenever you have customers, they have somewhere they can sit as they need to be served. So um, it was more about cost cutting. So we didn't go to buy those high-end furniture. So we started small. We started with the most affordable uh, furniture and equipment that we could. Yeah. Thank you, Julius. Gen Z's may not know about the sofa sets that uh, millennials used to buy at Motindwa, but uh, those days, if you didn't have a seat from Motindwa, really. <laughs>